I greet you in the name of Jesus. What an honor to have you with us here in the Q&A. Um, I've had a couple of questions that I want to answer. The first one comes from Ulantunde. I don't know where he's from. Um, he just says, please, I want to know how to maintain spiritual connection and how to stay in fellowship with God daily, especially in the light of grace of the grace message. Is, by re- is it by reading the Bible, praying daily, doing devotionals, etc.? I'll be expecting your answer as I want to put it into practice. Thank you in earnest expectation of your answer. So, um, Ulantunde, I want to just say this to you. If you are going to go go and do devotionals and um, just listen to messages, praying daily and all those type of things, from a law perspective, you're not going to maintain or stay in contact with the message of grace. One of the most important things that I will uh, uh, advise you to do is, if you want to stay in the message of grace, is to, first of all, have a mindset that says, I'm going to study the grace of God from the Bible. So, uh, a very good thing to do is to take like the book of Galatians or Ephesians, especially the first couple of chapters of Ephesians. Um, the book of Galatians is very good. You can read the whole whole of Galatians, especially chapter 3, 4 and 5. And um, you can also go and read Romans. The book of Romans is very powerful. Uh, do chapter 4, 5, and 6, and um, just read through that, study that through, read it continually, and as you read that continually and study it through, you will find that your mindset will become that, uh, will, ha- will be a grace oriented mindset, and then from that perspective, I would say, you go and read the rest of the Bible. Um, this Bible is written so that we can see the message of grace. But a man has been designed by God to only see what he believes. Um, So we, uh, and and your mind only really accepts what you already believe, which is a very good thing because that's the way God made us. Uh, If you can already believe that God is good, all that you will see and hear and that your heart will allow is that God is good. So um, the, the problem with that is, Uh, there's a negative side to that, and that is that once you start to believe that God is bad, and you start to believe that God judges people, puts you through hard times to purify you, and all those negative law-based doctrine, and your heart believes that, that's the only thing your heart will allow. So for you to stay, and and, and this is a question, please, I want to know how to maintain spiritual connection, or how to stay in fellowship with God daily, especially in the light of this grace message. So, if you want to stay in connection with God in the light of the grace message, let me just sum this up. Go to, go to Romans 4, 5, 6. Study it out. Make some time. Study that out from the perspective of grace. Before you go and sit down, you say, God, I want to see your grace. I want to see your love in this. When you read anything that doesn't make sense to you in the light of grace and unconditional love, just skip it. Now, you might say, Bertie, but that's not a good way. Uh, uh, I want to just say, just skip that and just go to what you do understand. And as your, the platform of grace is formed in your heart, you will start to see grace. Right? That's Romans 4, 5, and 6. Galatians, the book of Galatians. Ephesians, the first couple of chapters. You can also do Colossians, especially Colossians chapter 3. Um, in Colossians 3, where it speaks about those people that, that, that are not part of the kingdom, that sin and all those things. There's a very good explanation for that, but just skip over that and, uh, and study that out. So... Um, Yes, uh, well, I'm doing this, so it's, it's like wonderful to know that people want to want to stay in the message of grace and that you want a fellowship that will really help you. Right, then there's another question. I was wondering where you got the translation for the word ye in, the Mal- in Malachi. <clears throat> and that is, th- this is the part where I say, uh, bring, uh, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Um, and say that it's the Alpha and the Omega. I would like to be able to find it for myself. It would be a great revelation to be able to see it. I just started to hear you teach about the gospel for three days, and I've heard about ten hours already, really getting a lot of revelation. But the word ye, I have, I have to see it. Please show me where to find it in the translation. You see, the problem with the word ye is it's, um, or that word all of tough, it's, it's used, it's the word that's used the most in the Bible. And it's only translated a couple of times into 15 or 16 different words because people don't know what it means. Um, it, it's actually not even translated into the English. But um, this is Scott. Scott, um, if you want to know where that is, you just take uh, download eSword, that is E, 
and then a, a little dash like that, and then sword, like in a sword for war and making a fight, esword.net, go to esword.net and download esword there, and um, it is for, for a donation, so you can just make a donation towards the people, and, um, and then uh, go to the Strong's Concordance, you will see there's, 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 a, uh, there's a King James Version, then there's a King James Plus, you go to the King James Plus in the program, and you will see all the Hebrew words there. Then you go to Malachi 3 verse 10, and you will see above ye there will be a word in brackets, number 853, um, in, in, in the Hebrew Strong's definitions, the word number 853, and you will see um, that it is not even translated. You can also, in Esau, downloads, download for free there the Thyre word definitions, the Thyre Greek di dictionary there, uh, Greek English dictionary, and... Um, you will see that he clearly states there that that word is not translated into English. So that's how you can find it. <clears throat> um, you know, sometimes it's a big thing in our minds to hear uh, grace in the area of finances because we've been, we've been um, you know, so indoctrinated. We want to see it for ourselves. It's good, Scott. See it for yourself. Share it with people. Amen. Then I've had another question. Um, man, I'm sorry. I didn't write the, the person's name down here, but it is, how should we... Um, how should a church function financially? How should a church function financially under the message of grace? Because we've always heard tithing, sowing, reaping. How are we going to function financially? How are people going to give towards the church? Now, one thing that I do believe, and this is a thing that God has shown me, is that I should not live in the guilt of other people. Now, what that means is that you, uh, uh, there's been many preachers that has abused people financially through the sowing and reaping and tithing message, bringing great harm to the lives of people. And, um, and, and I don't say they did it maliciously. I don't say that uh, they, they knew that uh, it's wrong, but they just preach it so that they can have money. It is because that's the way people have been preached, with sincere hearts. Uh, most of these, these pastors preach. I, I preach tithing and sowing and reaping with a sincere heart believing that the people are going to prosper, it's going to go well with them. And I had their best interest uh, um, in my mind to see them prosper and uh, being blessed. But <clears throat> um, our, our intent of heart does not uh, uh, guarantee good fruit. Like a child can, for instance, go and the intent of his heart can be to, to, uh, to just play with, with his toys. And he can do it in the middle of the highway and um, he's going to die. Um, in the same way it happens, it happens, the people's intent are wrong, but the consequence is exactly the same as with the persons whose intent wasn't wrong uh, most of the time. So, um, out of this, you know, I, I felt so guilty, and um, I, don't, I didn't want to speak about finances, I didn't want to speak about giving, um, I wouldn't wanna, didn't want to share my vision, because I was so scared that it's going to sound like I'm one of those guys that just want money from people and whose vision is just having money from people. But that is not right. <clears throat> I cannot live in the, in, in the guilt of another man. I have not committed that sin um, because we've re I've received Jesus Christ in this area of my f of finances and there's a grace way of giving. Paul comes and he writes to Timothy. He clearly says to Timothy, tell those that are rich to give. Um, and, and then he comes and he says that, he, Paul prays, he says, I pray that the God, that God, uh, uh, that, that grace is multiplied to you so that you will have abundance so that you can give liberally and in abundance. So giving is part of the, uh, the, the New Testament, the way preachers function, um, and I will wrap this up now, the, the way preachers function in the church is there are people that work and preach, but Paul said that that was not the best way of doing it. He did that just because of people's hardness of heart when it comes to finances in the church in Corinth. Um, and and he, there was other churches that sponsored him and gave to him so that they can go and preach the gospel. So I would say the way a church functions financially is the pastor should be bold, um, take, t take the message of grace, teach the nature of the believer uh, when it comes to giving. And as people don't even accept Jesus without a preacher, as people cannot believe in Jesus without hearing the gospel of grace and function in that, as people don't get healed without hearing the voice of, 
of the word of God concerning healing, as people don't receive, uh, um, you know, uh, wisdom and things without a preacher, in the same way, they're not going to be givers unless we preach the gospel of grace to them as well. You will find a small percentage of people just do that naturally, but there are people that need teaching, they believe the word, they hear the word, they believe the word, and as they believe, they've got access into the grace, which is God's enablement, so that they can go and... and um, and, and be givers and be generous in the kingdom of God. So it's not a manipulative thing. It's not giving to get. It is the teaching of the believer. So uh, uh, of the nature of the believer and the nature of God and what grace brings forth in a person. Second Corinthians 8 verse 1 says that uh, talks about the church in Macedonia. He says, I, I can testify of how the grace came upon the churches in Macedonia and they gave liberally. So, um, so yes, Oh, sorry, I, f I forgot to put your name down here, my friend. Um, yes, the, the way the church functions financially is the leader or the pastor would preach the gospel, um, generosity will be worked in the heart of the people, and then those people must respond to the, the feeling of generosity, the feeling of giving, and do what they feel in their heart. And um, if the people struggle to do that, I believe that that pastor needs to teach about that. It's in the very same way. If you see people struggle to live a sexually moral life in your church and they just live together and sleep together and all those type of things, we need to teach about uh, um, w what marriage is really about and uh, w w what picture it's all about. And, uh, how, and that will bring forth a power inside people to get married or if they're in a wrong relationship to, to, to end that. Uh, I wouldn't say just rebuke people for their sin all the time, but teach the, teach the person something that can produce, produce the new life. In the same way, if people don't give in a church, um, there's something wrong. Because the fruit of tr the true grace message is, we look at, the Bible says, look at the grace of God, how He was rich and became poor. L listen to this, so that we can become rich. So the grace of God upon Jesus was that He would give His life. He would be rich and become poor so that others can be rich. So in other words, and then he, 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 he told the people in 2 Corinthians there, he says, listen, look at this, that people, uh, that G, the grace that was upon Jesus made him to give. So you are now under grace and you know the grace of Jesus. So now this grace abounds to you so that the fruit of your righteousness can increase, which is generosity increase in your life and teach people. Just teach people that. We should not be ashamed of speaking about finances under the uh, message of grace. And um, with me, I preach that you don't have to tithe to, to, to give. I told people we give out of the abundance of our hearts. But, uh, but there was not a time when I really started to teach my people um, in our church about grace giving. How does grace giving work? And uh, people didn't give. Um, they, they just, they wouldn't give. But as I started to teach on this and teach the nature of the believer... Uh, we find that the finances definitely increased and that, uh, that, that, I mean, the church is blessed, the people are blessed. Not because they give, but they're blessed because they know that they're functioning in the generosity of God. So that's basically how it, how it functions. And then the, the basic other things, I mean, that is just legal stuff. Um, you know, the books must be right. Spend the money for what you promise the people to do it for. Don't cheat the tax man. And, 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 and that's just normal normal uh, uh, legal stuff. Okay, right, another question we've got here. Um, uh, this person asked, but I think he didn't put his name on here. Let me just make sure on that. It's one of the Bible school students. Elise sent this to us um, from Canada. Um, she didn't say the name of the person. But he asked and he said, is the spirit of a person dead? If he, uh, when Adam sinned, did the spirit of a person die? And are all the spirits now alive in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? What happened there? Now, <clears throat> the first thing that I want to say is that uh, uh, a spirit can never die. Even when Adam sinned, the spirit of man never died. I remember, maybe I've said somewhere in one of my teachings, um, but we, a, a spirit can never die. Even if you uh, die today and never accepted Jesus, this is my belief, that you will forever live in hell. Um, your spirit can never die. So when Adam sinned, his spirit never died. Death is, in, in the eyes of God, is defined uh, in a different way. The way death is defined is, 
having no knowledge of God, but having knowledge of something else. Having no knowledge of Jesus, but having knowledge of something else. So when Adam sinned, he died in the eyes, he, he, spiritually, and, and I mean even physically it manifested, and emotionally, in his mind, he died as a human being. He died by having knowledge of the law as a way unto life. The reason why I say this is because they, uh, um, uh, Peter said that you are, it, it, they asked Jesus, they said, or Jesus asked his disciples and said, do you want to leave me? They said, where shall we go? Because with you are the words of life. And also said that this is eternal life. Jesus prayed this, this is eternal life. To know Jesus, that's eternal life. So eternal life is to know Jesus, the only true God. You know, so, um, so to know Jesus is life. So I think that answers the whole thing. Is a person's spirit alive when Jesus rose from the dead? No, no. Jesus is the way unto life. So, when Jesus rose from the dead, everybody did not become alive. Everybody got the choice now to have knowledge of life and then become alive by believing in Jesus Christ. That is the way, the way I see it. If, if that's not clear to you, my friend, uh, please just ask the question again in a different way that I can make it clear to you. Thank you for that. Man, I think that is everything. Okay, then I've got some other questions here, but that's, that is in Afrikaans. Um, asking why certain scriptures, the, the, the question here is why do certain scriptures contradict each other in the Bible? In John 19, Matthew 27 and Luke 23, talking about the account of the crucifixion of Jesus, saying that every, these three, three differ. Um, uh, this is, comes from uh, uh, J. Lotter. Somewhere in South Africa. Uh, Mr. Lotter, the way I see this is um, uh, there were many things in the Bible that I thought contradicted each other, but as I studied it out and went onto the web and asked why does these things contradict, I realized that there's some Jewish traditions and Jewish ways of writing things that, we, that I didn't know and actually it was not contradicting each other um, as I thought it was. Um, the thing about the Bible is uh, the, the purpose of the Bible is to bring forth the gospel of grace. So if you're reading the gospel of grace in every verse, my friend, you're reading the word and God's intent for you for, with the Bible has been accomplished. So, um, so many times we, we, we look at scriptures and we look at this one, doesn't say exactly like that one, and we get so hooked up into um, why this little thing and we're missing the gospel. You know, the Pharisees could have had exactly the same argument and saying, but this prophet said this, this prophet said this, and they could have, for years and years and decades and, I mean, thousands of years, they can argue about why these things differ. But what does, what's God's intent with the Word of God? What's God's intent with the Bible? The intent with the Bible is simply to understand the gospel of grace. Amen, amen. Now that is everything for today. If you've got any questions, please mail it to questions at dynamicministries.com. I want to say it again, questions at dynamicministries.com. Then there's something new on our website that I want to bring to your attention. The daily clips that I've got that I upload on Facebook, maybe there's some of you that, that's not on Facebook, you can go to Bertie's Bible Study Notes, and under my Bible Study Notes you will see that, that I've got all the clips there uploaded on a daily basis. There's also now something new you will see at the top of the page there uh, above the, the, the search part of the page on the left hand side under Baptist Bible Study Notes. I've got these clips in high quality, only downloadable. You cannot watch it online, only download it because it's just too big. It will take you maybe with a fast line 15 or 20 minutes to download. But the reason I did it that way is so that you can go and write a DVD from that and use it in cell groups or Bible studies. I think these uh, two-minute video clips are very powerful to use in Bible studies. So you can listen to one of them and then uh, uh, prepare your message, you know, listen to one of them, go and take two or three scriptures, you know, in line with that, and prepare that, and, and in such a way, have Bible studies and cell groups in the lines of grace, and that will really help people. It will, you know, th this is just the way people are. If you come to your Bible study group and you say, well, this is grace, you might find people not agree with you thinking you're the only person saying something. But if you've got an, another guy from the other side of the world um, saying this very same thing, 
and you see it on a video clip and they can go to my website and check out more things and in such a way link up with other grace preachers. Um, it just, the Bible says something's in the mouth of two or three witnesses, something is established. And I've seen it in the heart of, and that was just an old law system, but I, I see it in the heart of people. When one guy comes and says something, they will say, yeah, it might be. When two say it, then people start to believe. When three say it, they definitely believe it. So uh, I think that's a powerful way. So go to Bathy's Bible Study Notes. You will see there, I've got written in big, high quality download. You can download it from there the clips uh, in, in the right size already to make these um, DVDs that you can use powerfully uh, to give to people. You can also um, uh, uh, use it just to watch in your house or whatever. I just thought that would be a good thing to use for you and make, make the grace message available for people all over the world. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, God bless you. Know that you're always loved of God and you can always enjoy the unconditional love of God. Amen.